Imagine a situation. You're on a plane, you're flying, and you're a manager. And you are concerned. You think that Agile is the way to go. Your company supports you. The team supports you. And actually, all the team went through Agile Bootcamp. Great stuff. You have four teams, and yet, for one team, it's somehow not working. How do you know that? Well, the product owner is somewhat not happy. Developers are somehow frustrating. Something is not right. When the plan lands, you have a decision. <laughs> it's an agile pro problem after all, right? So if it's an agile problem, why not just hire for six weeks an agile coach and see what he can find and perhaps even fix. So hello, everyone. My name is Daniel. And uh, I happen to be that Agile coach who accepted the challenge. Um, in the past, yeah, I've been a developer, Scrum Master, a group director, and yeah, now I'm an Agile coach. So today I'll guide you through the first four weeks of that challenge. Uh, and I hope uh, you'll get some ideas for six workshops and how they interconnect and how they create a base for moving forward. So uh, I know the history of all those events because I'm tracking uh, what's going on uh, and writing down all the story while it unfolds. So the context. We're talking about the uh, Cerium, one of the several, several Cerium's in SAB Global Services. So it's not a new project. It's been developed for two years at the moment when I joined. And um, yeah, no, nothing really special as a CRM. Um, the team. Well, you could say that there is somewhat 12 uh, people in the team, depending on how you count. And uh, roughly, it's uh, the business uh, in Stockholm. And here in Vilnius, the development, roughly. The process, Scrum, you know, like Scrum. So they're using TFS uh, just for you know, management of the backlog and uh, online stuff. And uh, the iteration is actually one month, uh, which is OK, because they do have a release in every um, end of iteration. So from the helicopter view, it all looks quite nice, actually. I mean, um, the boot camp was really great. The, uh, Product owner brings the feedback, mm, iterations and stuff, autonomy. I was actually quite surprised at the amount of autonomy I found. That was not something I expected. And yet, why then hire an Agile coach? Well, the expectation was that uh, an external Agile coach could bring in unbiased view on the situation. There was a lot of history going on, and uh, digging into that would be quite hard. And uh, also, of course, external practices, something that worked elsewhere. And uh, yeah, the manager that made the decision had too much on his plate. So he definitely wasn't able to jump on a single uh, team and uh, do all the magic uh, by himself. So the journey. When you actually uh, onboard and start working with a new team, I would really propose to consider what is the end goal. When you're an Agile coach, you know that you will be changing way of work. Now try to repeat that in your head. You will be changing the way of work. How does that feel? So resistance is probably one of the words that comes to, to your mind. But actually, the good thing about the resistance is that it doesn't really exist. The resistance is basically an intelligent reaction to people doing, um, well, not knowing exactly what's the context and so on and doing crazy stuff. So I didn't want to do crazy stuff. Uh, and this is why I've actually started with the uh, one-on-ones uh, with pretty much everyone who was uh, involved. Uh, it did take time, definitely. Uh, but I 
was really glad that I did so. Uh, the goal was to listen. It was not to uh, teach or, or say something in particular. The goal was to listen and to understand what is bothering people. And of course, to answer questions as well. You're new to the team, so you need to introduce yourself somehow. So we were visualizing uh, all the talk and working with the board a lot. You could see this is uh, a board after one of the talks, so one to two hours and the board is all messy. Uh, but even so, it allowed us to d dig deep and avoid running in circles. And the findings, I, I'm really glad I did that upfront. So they did know a lot about, about Agile. So there was no need for basics. I could only imagine how ridiculous it would be if I would start from Agile 101. So we didn't do that. Instead, what we did, we start to challenge the constraints. So this is something I usually do with the new teams, actually. Um, the goal is to challenge the sprint length, regardless of the sprint length itself. And usually I ask, what would it take to reduce the sprint length in half? And this is an interesting question, because the people start to think and consider all the crazy things that will not work, and they bring all those things on the board. We discuss it a little bit. The goal is not to solve anything, but the goal is to identify things that you will not be able to change at all. As an ex-developer, I know that when managers uh, try to create all the new managerial stuff, you know, uh, new frameworks and so on. Well, you can do that in weeks to months. But if you have a legacy system and you want to have continuous releases fast, that just might not work for you very well. So um, I did want to, to find and check if there are some kind of these constraints. And uh, there actually were two main bad things, I would say. So the release to production was uh, still somewhat manual. Uh, this does not look good when you want to shorten the sprint length. And uh, actually, the security model was uh, something tricky. So a new upfront that will have challenges with product backlog. So next thing we did, we started to visualize the work. This is the usual practice when you want to understand how the items flow. So we started by dividing to two teams and actually trying to draw exactly how an item being uh, in the very early stage, like idea, goes all the way through whatever the stages are and lands into the production. So we did that uh, by splitting the team in two, uh, just to, in order to avoid uh, leadership being like too proactive and overtaking the whole discussion. Uh, and then focusing on what are the artifacts, what are the um, meetings or other ceremonies that they have. We really try to avoid uh, the question of who is responsible for what. Who is responsible for what usually leads to blame games and nothing uh, as a good outcome. So we really avoided that. So we iterated, and uh, each of the team presented their view on uh, how the work is being done inside that one team. They presented it to each other, and we just had a good discussion. The goal of that, though, is to, uh, again, make some findings and proceed with the visualization. So the findings were that the way of work was actually nothing really special. It was quite standard one. And the challenges the team was facing were also quite common ones. So not explicit uh, definition of done. So what does it mean to be done? What does it mean to be in a particular state? That was somewhat not very much explicit. And sometimes they were mixing pull and push. As a consequence, uh, for instance, in analysis, a lot of items were piling up because items were pushed to analysis rather than pulled into analysis. So we started to work on the board. Uh, I usually do that because the board is something easy for everyone to change, easy to understand, uh, and not that difficult to create, actually. So we started drawing based on the findings from the previous workshop and drawing some more. And then 
we were finally happy. So what we created, we created the whole flow through the idea to production. And of course, the Scrum is only part of that. It's, it's not like Scrum like that, not, not really. Scrum is only part of that, somewhere here. And we agreed on the coloring styles, and we run through a couple of items to make sure that it is this way and it does work. So after we had that, we started to map the state. And here we began with an additional workshop. So before actually bringing all the items on the board, there is one thing you want to agree on. What does it mean to be in a particular state? So what does it mean, for, un for instance, to be ready for uh, development? Do we need uh, acceptance criteria? Do we need mockups? Uh, or a line of user story is enough? And this workshop was uh, very interesting, not because we agreed on something, and, it, and the goal was not to create any kind of gates. It was the intent to start talking about what are the real expectations, what I as a developer expect from business analyst, what I as a business analyst expect from product owner. And actually, when they started to express their expectations, the findings were quite interesting. And if you're conducting this kind of workshop, keep in mind a couple of things. First, it takes time. It can easily take up to four, six hours so we, for instance, split it, uh, the whole workshop uh, into days. Uh, second thing is you don't want to impose anything. You want to find out how it is at the moment. And there is a reason for that. And the reason is the next workshop. So map the state. And this is literally taking everything that is in the backlog and putting that on the board. And here you need to stand your ground. So if we agreed that an item uh, is ready for development, if we have whatever mockups, as I mentioned, and acceptance criteria, and the item doesn't have that, well, it goes back to analysis. That's it. No exceptions, no excuse. If you would impose something on the team, there will be tons of excep uh, exceptions, and um, you know, people would generally not agree. But in this case, it was the way the team works at the moment. And we instantly found out that, take a look at the analysis in progress. A bunch of items here, one person working. Not good. You can see here we have blockers, and those are blockers on extern external vendors. Not good as well. Something is smelly here. So we've done that. And we were kind of ready to change things, right? Well, not exactly. Before we actually go ahead and try to improve, change something, I think that we need to consider what are the expectations. So what it is we are building? Who are the main users? And what is an acceptable timeline? I find this question to be more valuable than when we are expected to deliver. Think a little bit about it, and perhaps it will be something of a use for you as well. And what did we find? Well, from the perspective of business, we were building a cockpit, a place where you can see everything, and you can change easily pretty much anything. So while that is a great vision indeed, it is not very helpful to bring that to development team and say, please build it. It simply doesn't work this way. It's too much abstract. So what we did, we started story mapping. So story mapping is an, a good old way of visualizing the backlog, not as a line, but on the wall. Uh, so we simply started to do that. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is not the actual image. But here we have the topmost uh, epic level, so high level things that needs to be done. And then they are split into smaller things here and yet smaller things there. So we mapped pretty much everything on the wall this way and ordered uh, in a priority. So the things on the left 
are most important ones on the right, least important ones on the top, most important ones below, least important ones. We did all that, and it represented what we want to build. But next, we actually started to use uh, to mapping uh, the main user workflow. So I think this image is quite ridiculously simple. And actually, I'm glad it is, because what, when we started, we had 30 types of users. And God knows how much uh, screens to develop. But when we actually started to segment user re users, we realized that there are mainly four types of users, not 30, four. And we are actually mostly need to focus on one. We actually realized that most of the users are using only seven different screens. And one type of the users is using even less. While this on its own information might not be very helpful, but here's the trick. Combine that with story map, and you have a much more interesting view to speak to developers, to the team in, as a whole. So for instance, here, when we combined that on a single board, it was instantly obvious when we went through the story map that in upcoming two, maybe three months, we are mainly going to work on one screen. And then for a long, long while, we're going to be mainly working on another screen. So, you know, now we have a focus. Out of God knows how much screens and how many users, we are mainly working with two screens and mainly focusing on one user group. Much more focus. So, and with that in place, we were now actually ready to act, to improve. And when I'm saying ready, I mean we were much more aligned. We were aligned on the framework, the Scrum. We were aligned on the state. The board shows us the state. We were aligned on the bottlenecks. In the board, you can actually see where the bottlenecks are because the items pile up there. And we were aligned on the goal. So the other part of the board showing the story map, that was our goal. And the beauty of it was that the alignment was among everyone. Developers, product owner, business analyst, managers, everyone. And that does enable decision making. And in fact, some decisions were quite obvious. For instance, as I mentioned, we needed to pay more attention to external vendors. We need to est establish second level client support because we noticed that uh, we have a lot of disturbances. We started to track that. We need to fix the provisioning pipeline, the analysis phase in progress. Th this is something not right here. We need to hire another developer because when we take a look at the timeline and the expectations, it's quite obvious that the expectations are much higher than our throughput. Uh, everyone was happy with the current main uh, transparency, so we decided that we need to keep that. Invest in automation, adopt online tools, and so on. So, very fast, one more time. Start with the end in mind. Challenge the constraints in case the team is mature. Visualize way of work. You want everyone to see what's going on. Map your state, real state, not what people believe it is, but the real state. Never forget the business. Don't make that mistake. I've done that a couple of times, doesn't work. And then you can act and actually improve stuff. And what about our manager? Well, now he didn't feel much like a traveler on the plane. He felt much more like a pilot in the plane, with Agile co Coach being his co-pilot. So thank you, everyone. Fly safe. <laughs> we got you covered. <laughs>